All right, so I've been running through an exercise trying to challenge myself, and I challenge you to do so as well. I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. This week I was in my closet and I was clearing out the clutter. I was knee deep in my closet and I came across an old binder of mine with some old woodworking projects and some designs. I came across this guy, which was an old project of mine probably around 15 years ago. I built many of these in the past and they sold very well on eBay. Yes, eBay. Back then, Amazon wasn't really a thing. It was still growing, and Etsy really wasn't around. So most of my life, I've been a musician. I play guitar, and these are known as footrests, musician's footrests. And this is your typical style. It sells for around $35 to $40, and it's uh, designed to fold up and lightweight, and you can throw it in your gig bag or your backpack. Mm. Okay. So what these are used for primarily is for ergonomic reasons, for um, practicing good posture while playing your instrument. Mostly adopted by the acoustic guitar, classical guitarist genre, where sitting down was required while performing. So these would actually help you practice good posture while playing so you don't hurt your back or put any undue stress on some of your body joints. Okay, so this is the only one I have left from when I used to make them 15 years ago. It's a basic construction. It has basic shapes. It's made out of maple, maple sides, and a front and back, and also a, I believe this is an oak top, which I would normally build them this way with contrasting colors. So as a younger me, I had templates made up with jigs for repeatability and ease. Typically, if I remember milling and cutting down the lumber to size and shaping and assembly, it would take me a day or two to be ready for applying the finish. Now, years later, we live in a time where technology is more affordable and more accessible to us, right? So alongside that, with the experience, our skill set has widened. And now with the affordability of owning a CO2 laser, a CNC router, or even a 3D printer, that brings a whole different level to the playing field for us. You know, when I was making these 15 years ago, I was always looking into how I can improve the build process. We want to be that seller that has great turnaround time, right? So we don't want to sit on inventory, obviously, waiting for the buyer to come along. We want to be able to take the order and somewhat build it out and then ship it. So we want that turnaround time to be quick. So I had this thought while I was knee deep in my closet cleaning. Let's see what I can do, a challenge to myself actually, what I can do with an old design and build process and bring it into the modern day, into today's age. Not necessarily to change the design. The challenge is to how can I improve upon the build process and repeatability. So the goal here is to revisit an old project. And I think for most of us, we get in that mental block, for me at least, when it comes to having all these new toys around us and I feel the pressure to produce something other than you know a V carved sign you know we want to expand our skill set and it's really difficult sometimes to find that project so I think revisiting old projects may lend itself to a new life and it'll help you come up with a different set of requirements and designs for the same end product result so that's my challenge to myself you know it's a good exercise for many people to do as well so off we go let's run through this exercise So I did a rough assembly of it just to mock it up so I can get a three-dimensional view of somewhat finished prototype. So there's a few design changes I need to make that are critical. Let me bring the original in. And as you can see, this angle is much steeper. The hole placement I have to bring down slightly. So there's a few changes I need to make in, within the design. But I'm almost there. If I check this, we're right at 70 degrees, and on my old CAD drawing, I do have 70 degrees, so I'm not sure in designing this where I went wrong, but obviously 
I screwed something up. So I need to adjust that. Well, would you look at that? I must have not locked in the hole placement and probably moved one before exporting it. Here I'm setting up the saw blade angle I need for the front facing piece so the top will sit flush with the leading edge. I'm just using one of the side pieces as a gauge. I don't think I mentioned this, but for this prototype number two, I'm using bamboo stock for the sides and front and back. Prototype one, I just used the MDF. Okay. Prototype one, cut out on the CNC, assembled, made out of MDF. And I just did this just to get a visual to make sure I'm okay with the shapes and all that. So I'm happy with that. Version two, well, prototype two, I kept the same shapes and the dimensions and use a different type of wood. I use bamboo. And let me just answer a question because I know there's gonna be a question. Where am I getting the bamboo? So I have a lot of these bamboo cutting boards that I would uh, customize for buyers. And I keep a lot of the ones that uh, either I reject or the customer doesn't end up buying them. So I just keep the boards and use the other sides. So I have the design set up and laid out where all of these pieces can be cut out on this 17 by 21 inch board. And if I wanted to, I can also include the top, but obviously I would need a a bigger board but I can include the top and uh, it would be a time savings and I will tell you why so normally the top I use like I said a different type of wood something that's more durable like oak that will withstand you know the, the feet and scratches and dents and all that so I normally use a different tone wood and it's a good contrasting uh, color to the maple as well so if I were to keep the same wood I would definitely include that in the cut list for the CNC and cut everything out at once. And that would only add an extra three minutes to the cut time. Whereas if I were to use a different type of wood, I have two options, right? I can load up another file and um, set up the machine and cut this on the CNC. And that would only be a one-time thing with the design. So obviously there's time savings there. For me, it would be easier just to cut this rectangle out on the table saw and route the edges and do the sanding. That adds to the time, obviously. That will add about 15 to 20 minutes of tool setup and sanding and routing the edges um, with a handheld router. So it does add time to it if I were to do this separately on it on my table saw. So food for thought. By the way, I'm wearing my glasses. I took my uh, contacts out. Don't ask. All right, so here we are at the CNC. Um, I have the Shapoko 
XXL for a CNC. That's what I'm using in case anyone asks. And I have an enclosure with the uh, with dust collection. So that's what I'm using. Shapoko XXL. Not the Pro. The old one. Okay. And I also have the enclosure, like I said. So when I built the enclosure, I never got around to properly building any sort of locking mechanism. So I use like a pole to hold it up. I'm the 10 percenter guy. 10 percenter guy, meaning I do everything 100% of the time, but that last 10 percent I procrastinate on. Okay, so let me just get things set up over here and I'll be right back. All right, as I said, I have a Shapoko 3 XXL. Great machine. Very reliable. All right, let me get it set up and we'll get going, cutting the top. Okay, just loaded my file and I'm just setting up the machine now and getting ready to cut. getting there so I wanted to experiment a little bit with some different shapes rather than the traditional rectangle shape on the top I wanted to experiment a little bit and I'm not sure if I like it but it is what it is so this took about nine minutes on the machine that was conservative so I could have probably ramped up the feed and speed a little bit to bring it down to like five or six minutes but this is, as I said, laminated bamboo. So it's somewhat like, it splinters like plywood almost. It has that same characteristic. So sometimes like I'm using an upcut spiral bit that'll tear it out and it'll literally, if I have one here somewhere, I don't, but it, it will literally splinter and just travel along the grain. So, but anyway, it's just, this is just a prototype phase, right? So I think I like the shape of the top. I'm not sure yet. Let me know what you think. Do you like the rectangle shape or the, I don't know if this we call this a kidney shape. I also put a little finger hole in there to carry it around. Why not? I think we're getting there. Again, if I were to just keep the traditional rectangle shape with a different type of wood, I would probably use my table saw and a router to do this, which would add about you know 15 to 20 minutes to the process. And machine time wise, it only took nine minutes. So I could knock a bunch of these out in an hour. With that being said, let me just play around with this a little bit and do some final assembly. I don't glue the top on. I treat it like a tabletop surface. So there's room for expansion, but I will glue the front and back to the sides with some wood screws and I will plug those up. Normally I plug these up with whatever wood I use on the top to give it that contrast. So, Obviously, I may do the same just for the heck of it because the, this is all the same type of wood, but, but normally I'll just glue the, the sides to the front and back and I will attach the top with some pocket screws from below. It's pretty simple the way this top attaches to the base frame. There are some pocket screws. There's only four, that's all you need. Just four hidden pocket screws to hold the top on. Not sure if I'm getting it on camera. There you go. There's a good example right there. Just four to hold the top on. That's it. It doesn't go anywhere. The top surface will get mud and scratched and scuffed up. So it's always good that you have the option to replace the top if you want. So what I'm going to do is uh, do some final sanding to this and maybe shape the top of it a little bit. Again, considering this is only a prototype, so I think I've proven my point with myself that I can duplicate this in a matter of like 20 to 25 minutes. And another probably 20 minutes of assembly, screwing it together, and obviously you have whatever it's gonna take um, to apply a finish to it in drying time. But however, I am really excited to take an old project like this and run it through the exercise to see 
how much time I can shave off the front end where I can make it repeatable. You know, if I want to sell these again, I can knock them out in 25 minutes, which is awesome. So I don't have to beforehand make a lot of these. I can just have, you know, an inventory of wood. And as the orders come in, I can do the fulfillment in, you know, within a day, which is awesome. Within a day or two, I should say. So I think, you know, this is a great exercise and I'm gonna see what else I can do. Like I said in the beginning, it's a real good exercise for us hobbyists to do that, to look back on old projects and give it a new life. And not only does it increase your skill set by doing so, but you also gain this confidence that if you do want to sell one of your old projects, you now have a different life on it. You can now produce them in a much quicker time and the customer will be happy and you will be happy. So if you like this type of content, please subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you in the next video.